Look, I think it's about time we get real about Devontae Adams' chances of joining the Las Vegas Raiders. We finally need to get real about that, and we're going to do that in just a second. My name is Wi-Fi Willie of the Raiders Rundown, and we got a lot of stuff to talk to you about today. Greg Olson is joining one of his former teams. He's the former offensive coordinator of the Raiders. We also have a new personnel director, Sean Hirock. Let's get into his history. And also Bucky Brooks of the NFL Network names one Raiders player as one of the top free agents of 2021. And then we're going to talk about this drama going on with the NFL Combine. Half of the players invited don't even want to attend and they're boycotting it. So we're going to talk about that at the end of the show. But let's first get into Devontae. Before anybody calls me a negative Nancy, let me just say, I watched Devontae Adams and Derek Carr play at Fresno State, my hometown. Trust me, I want this to happen more than anything. I want Devontae Adams to be a Raider and I don't really care how much we pay him because I'm nostalgic for the past. Those were some great memories. I want to recreate those memories. But I just got to be honest about what's happening here, man. I I really don't think it's going to work out for several reasons. First, negotiations have halted for the for Devontae Adams and the Packers since last season. They really haven't talked at all. So that bodes well if you're a Raiders fan who wants to see Devontae because that kind of shows there's tension there if they're not really talking. Kind of some weird stuff, right? But at the same time, there's no reason to talk unless you're going to extend a contract, unless you know your salary cap situation. We all know the Packers are about $48 million under the salary cap. So there's no point in talking about a negotiation when you don't have any money to spend, but they are expected to maneuver with the cap. This is coming from Adam Schefter. The Packers are prepared to go all in on Aaron Rodgers in 2022, spending as close to the cap this year and spreading it into future years as much as possible per sources. Saints use this approach for Drew Brees and Green Bay willing to deploy it and Green Bay is willing to deploy that model to entice Aaron Rodgers. So, look, we know that Devontae Adams likes playing with Aaron Rodgers. If Rodgers does return to the Packers, he's going to be happy with getting franchise tagged. And they, they are expecting to franchise tag him for about $20 million. The franchise tag window officially opens Tuesday, February 22nd, and closes March 8th. They have until March 8th to, the, to get this done. So I'm going to pump the brakes on any Devontae Adams to the Raiders rumors until March 8th. If we hit March 8th and Devontae Adams is not franchise tagged, then I'll start freaking out and saying yes let's go let's get Devontae Adams he's going to be a free agent but to be honest when you look at Adam Schefter's tweet saying the Packers are going all in on Aaron Rodgers and you know that they have the option to franchise franchise tag Devontae there's really no way he can get out of that unless he holds out and I don't think he's going to hold out because Green Bay has given him a fat contract in the past. Now, the big thing about Aaron Rodgers, does he want to play football? Does he want to join the Packers? When you look at the landscape of the NFL, the Packers are the best team that he could possibly join to make a Super Bowl run. And look at this, man. Tom Brady has retired. Matthew Stafford and the Rams, who knows what's going to happen with Stafford, but typically, you know, the same team doesn't usually win the Super Bowl consecutively. So Aaron Rodgers has a lot of incentives to compete right now. Tom Brady's going to be out of the way. He is hands down the best quarterback in the NFC, and he was close to getting to the Super Bowl almost every year. They're just knocked out of the playoffs by these really good teams. You got no more Drew Brees, no more Tom Brady, and he also does not want to retire the same year as Tom Brady. If Aaron Rodgers retires the same year as Tom Brady, when they have the Hall of Fame celebration five years from now, he's going to be overshadowed by Tom Brady. It's going to be all about Brady, and Aaron Rodgers is going to be a side piece. He's going to be a little side piece, right? And the real main event it's going to be Brady. He doesn't want that to happen. If he retires next season, boom, he's going to steal the show uh, at, at the Hall of Fame celebration that happens in the future. And we know he's going to the Hall of Fame for sure. So I think there's several reasons to think that Rodgers is going to stay with the Packers. They could void his contract, spread it out over several years, still pay it off in 2023, 2024, 2025. So the cap really isn't going to be an issue for them this year. And then you save your 20 million for Devonte Adam. Make one last Super Bowl run. So let's Push this back a year. Devontae Adams, 2023. Is he going to be a Raider? That's more realistic than 2022. Greg Olson has joined the Rams as an offensive assistant. Not an offensive coordinator. Kind of a demotion in some ways. But he will be working with Sean McVay there in Los Angeles. And that is a good job. Greg Olson kind of gets made fun of a lot by Raiders fans. Because the offensive performance kind of dwindled in the second half of the season. When he took over for play calling duties instead of John Gruden who was canceled. I, Greg Olson didn't do that good of a job. I, I 
was frustrated at times looking at his play calling, but hey, the league respects this guy. And that's what I keep telling people. Gus Bradley, hired by the Colts, a great organization to be their defensive coordinator. And now Greg Olson is the offense assistant for the Rams, another great organization that just won a Super Bowl. An organization that probably has a long list of candidates to choose from, but they chose Greg Olson. That just shows, man, despite the fact that these people aren't super successful with the Raiders at times, they are still a top coaching talent and well-respected among the league. Greg Olson, though, I think the one thing that bothers me is his look. I don't really know what this guy is going for. I don't know how much pomade you need to wear in your hair to look that sweaty. And maybe he's going for like a Sons of Anarchy look. I see that happening a lot. Uh, maybe this guy needs to suit up in a leather jacket when he's out there in Los Angeles. We'll see how Greg Olson does this year. But hey, best wishes to Greg. Seems like a good dude. Hopefully he has some success this year, just not against the Raiders. Sean Harak hired as a personnel advisor for the Raiders just today. So the newest addition to Dave Ziegler's staff, former friend of his, and we anticipate them to start working immediately on who they're going to draft this upcoming year because Sean Hurlock has a long history of being a scout. He also was the interim general manager when John Gruden and Mark Davis fired Reggie McKenzie. Reggie McKenzie was out. Sean Hurlock took over in 2018. And that's pretty huge, man. The fact that this guy was an interim GM means he has huge credentials. And one aspect about him being interim GM is that John Gruden actually was thinking about having him be the general manager before Mike Mayock took over. He was one of the leading candidates to repl replace Reggie McKenzie. I believe he was interviewed at the end of the season, but Mike Mayock got the job. Unfortunately for Raiders fans, maybe. I don't know. You guys let me know how well Mike Mayock did with his drafting. Would you rather have had Sean Hirock? Sean Hirock was part of the Raiders organization for a long time. From 2012 to 2018, he was the director of college scouting. And then before that, he worked with the Packers, assistant director of college scouting. He was an intern with the Packers. was able to climb up and get that job. Kind of started from the bottom and came up in a certain way. And then he's been with the Browns scouting and their departments for the past three years. We'll see how he does with the Raiders this year. Bucky Brooks of the NFL Network has his top 10 free agents of 2021. Who are the best signings? Who are the best deals? He left out some Raiders who I thought did really well in 2021 as free agents, in particular Casey Hayward. I think he should have made that list as one of the top 10 free agents of 2021, despite the fact that it was only a one-year deal. I just think Casey Hayward had a great performance reuniting with Gus Bradley in 2021. Unique Ngakwe uh, is ranked fifth on Bucky Brooks' list of top 2021 free agents. Really good list to be a part of and really great that we have him and Max Crosby for this upcoming season. Let's hear what Bucky Brooks had to say. Reuniting the one-time Pro Bowler with his former head coach Gus Bradley sparked a renaissance for the six-year pro. Ngakwe notched double-digit sacks, 10 for the first time since 2017. Wow, that's four years. And helped the Raiders' front line become a more disruptive unit. With the veteran joining Max Crosby to create a formidable tandem on the edges, the Raiders are well-positioned to continue to wreak havoc on opponents on passing downs, even with Bradley heading to Indianapolis in 2022. So Patrick Graham, our new defensive coordinator, has a lot to work with. There are still some holes on this defense. There's a lot of people departing. But when you have two edge defenders who rank top 10 in almost every statistical category possible, you're set up for success, man. If we can get really good interior pass rush on passing downs, our defensive line will maybe be unstoppable. We saw Max Crosby have one of the best seasons of any edge defender in the NFL and have had the highest pressures in the NFL just this past year. What can they do in the future? Hopefully they do a lot, but I will say one criticism about Unique Ngakwe is the run defense has to improve. He has consistently had a low run defensive PFF grade, and you saw teams be capable of running up the gut for the Raiders for the first half of the season, but I will admit it did improve in the second half of the season. Wow, this is really crazy, man. I've never heard anything like this happening where people are actually boycotting the combine because of the health and safety measures that will be imposed during the combine. Now, let me just read this tweet from Ian Rappaport. Agents representing more than 150 draft prospects are organizing a boycott of all testing, on-field workouts, and interviews at next month's NFL Combine if heavy bubble restrictions aren't changed, sources tell me and Tom Pelissero. So, there is going to be a bubble restriction at the NFL Combine. What does that mean? That means that you can only have one medical trainer with you as a draft, draft prospect. 300 draft prospects are invited to the NFL Combine. 150 represented by several agencies are boycotting boycotting so almost half of the draft prospects are boycotting the combine electing to still to get tested at pro day when you look at this historically 
players often do better at the pro day instead of the NFL combine. The pro day, uh, the teams are, are testing the 40 times themselves rather, rather than the representatives at the NFL combine who represent the whole entire NFL. The NFL combine is a good way to fraternize with different teams. If you're a lower round draft prospect, you're going to actually like the combine because you can talk to certain coaches, talk to GMs, get a one-on-one -on -one connection with them. And these new restrictions that are going to be in place, this bubble is going to make that much harder. It's going to be very difficult to talk to other teams. It's going to be very difficult to talk to other players and compete with them at the combine. And historically, combine numbers, the 40 time numbers, all that stuff, they are worse than pro days. So a lot of the top prospects, you know, your big time people who are, who are expecting to go in the first round, they don't really want to test at the combine because that could only hurt them. You know, they know they're going to get selected high up anyways. If they test and have a low 40 time at the combine, which is going to be more realistic than the pro day, then it's going to hurt their draft stock. So you got kind of the lower end players more interested in the combine, but the NFL Players Association and some of these top agencies are, are organizing to tell these players to not participate. They're basically saying the combine is antiquated and that players shouldn't participate because they, one, they risk injury and the testing and times and measurements typically don't favor them. We'll see what happens. The NFL Players Association is very contradictory here. For the health and safety measures during the season, they wanted to postpone games. They wanted to say playing games were not safe for NFL players, therefore we need to postpone. We need to implement all these measures. But then they're switching their tune when it comes to the NFL draft. And they're saying, oh, these measures are making things more difficult. We don't need these measures. So clearly it's just biased. I think it's just these draft picks trying to do what's best for them, trying to not test poorly and hopefully reap the benefits of not even playing at a combine. I hope the combine happens. I hope uh, players test at the combine because it's just a great opportunity for, for somebody on the lower end to really come up and, ha and, and, and raise their stock, raise their stock. So I'm rooting for the players who don't have the most favorable position. All right, so some Ram fans were having a good time celebrating a victory. And then you got Joe Burrow's sister-in-law getting heated with them. I just wanted to show you guys this video. This this, this, this is actually just really funny. This way, X and Y. But tonight, what's the story? Hey, is this what Joe Burrow does? Wait a minute, yeah. Oh. She grabs their mouths. She walks Tyler, up and grabs hey, their hey, mouths. We did it for him. She tried to say, did you personally play? We know he didn't play, bro. I mean, he's shorter than this chick. So obviously he didn't play if he's shorter than this chick. But hey, you didn't play either. At least this guy probably took some cracks in high school, right? With his coach who, you know, got on his ass for probably his grades, maybe, you know, maybe. But hey, uh, it's just funny to see. Okay, so here's what we've confirmed. The older gentleman in the Bengals jersey is actually Joe Burrow's grandfather. The blonde woman in the black jersey is Burrow's mother. I understand, though, getting heated, though, like people are talking crap and that's your family member. So I understand that, you know, this lady was getting heated hearing these guys talk some smack. But it's the Super Bowl. Your team just won this. Imagine if the Raiders won the Super Bowl. How much how much crap are we going to talk when the Raiders win the Super Bowl? I don't care if you're Joe Brothers, freaking sister in law, whatever. I'm going to straight just yell Raiders in your face. You know what I'm saying? So I respect these fans, though. I think this lady got a little heated. I understand it's your family, but you got to show some class. You got to be professional. You know what I'm saying? Yo, thank you for checking out the show today, man. Remember to subscribe to this channel to get more Raiders videos. They are coming out every single day. And like this video if you watched it all the way through. YouTube is always trying to shut me down, bro. And a like really helps boost me in the algorithm. So I appreciate it if you do that. This is Wi-Fi Willie of the Raiders Rundown. Peace out and have a good one.